One of the occupational hazards of being a reviewer is that you have to see some plays more than you really want to. The trade-off is that seeing a really good play again is a richer experience every time. David Lindsay Abair's Good People is a really good play, and the fine current production by the Alpha Players showed me more to admire than I have ever seen before. The first setting is a back alley behind a dollar store in Southie, the Irish working class neighborhood in South Boston where Lindsay Abair himself grew up. It's a place where an individual's identity is tied to being a part of the community. If you didn't already know that, you learn it from this scene. Margie Walsh has been brought to the alley by her boss at the dollar store. The 50-year-old Margie is a cashier, but she's habitually late for her job because she has a developmentally disabled adult daughter who can't be left alone. If her child care is late, so is Margie. She thinks she's being reprimanded when she's really being fired. Her boss, Stevie, is the son of an old friend of Margie's, and she does everything she can to use the old neighborhood connection to save her job. Stevie says he has no choice because of pressure from above. The idea that good people from Margie's neighborhood should act in a certain way is a recurring theme in the play. Margie's community is Southie, but we all know of neighborhoods that have just as strong a sense of what it means to be good people. The question of honoring neighborhood ties is again an issue when Margie takes a suggestion from her friend Jean, who just had a chance meeting with an old boyfriend of Margie's named Southie, Mike Dillon. He's now a successful doctor. Jean advises Margie to see if Mike has a job for her. He doesn't, but Margie fights for herself in this encounter, encounter as tenaciously as she did when she was being fired. She gets under Mike's skin when she accuses him of not embodying neighborhood values anymore. The tension between these two escalates when Margie visits Mike and his wife Kate in their suburban home. What is it that creates so much tension between Margie and Mike about their connection to each other in their old neighborhood? In an excellent performance, Trish Nelke is equally accomplished at portraying Margie's uncertainty about her prospects and her certainty about her values. Nelke's accent leaves no doubt about Margie's origins. The Mike of T. Joseph Reinert has clearly come a long way from the old neighborhood, but he can still fight like someone from the neighborhood. As Kate Dillon, Elizabeth Bell McCormick is another worthy combatant in a three-way conflict with shifting alliances. Teresa Melnikoff is a forceful presence as Margie's friend Jean, and Nancy Krauss puts the emphasis on humor in her portrayal of Margie's landlady, Dottie, a name that seems apt in this portrayal. Margie's boss, Stevie, is an important character in developing the theme of what it means to be good people. Stephen Shamanik vividly reflects the effect of neighborhood values on Stevie. The set by Lily Allison and Laura Crocht achieves good results with limited resources. The play is ably supported by Crocht's direction, Barbara Lang's costumes, Bob Veach's lighting, and Janice Manakis's props. I suspect I will never tire of seeing good people in good productions. Yeah, it is a lovely play. I mean, so so much going on in it, uh, subtle uh, as it develops and the relationships between the characters, and such a good production. Uh, sometimes we don't know when we go to community theater. Uh, it can be very good, it can be not so good, and this was very good. I, I mean, uh, Trish Nelke, especially in the leading role of Margie, but the whole cast did a very good job on this. Absolutely.